Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the game tutorial where we make a tower that defends itself against little cubes. So right, so um, this is our game scene right here and we haven't really tackled anything in there, we just created it so we can actually access it from the hub. But today we are going to start spawning our enemies in a pentagon shape. So if we just take a look at the scene over here and I'm pressing on A to spawn an enemy, that's a debug key of course. Later on we'll have our own spawning mechanics that is done automatically. It's actually being spawned in a different zone every single time I spawn a new one. And uh, there's five zones, so that's why I say it's a pentagon shape. Right guys, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so let's have a look at our game right now. We have the preloader, we have this hub scene, and we also have inside of here our game scene so this is pretty much what happens we got a tower here so we know that this is transferred from uh, the preloader to the menu to the hub and then to the game so we don't really need to touch this right now what we need to do at this point is to actually create some enemy but um, not really creating them we need to spawn them first so we need some kind of spawn manager and that's exactly what we're gonna be doing right now so um, we're gonna be having a script a static script that is going to allow us to spawn a enemy whenever we want by simply specifying a int for the prefab ID and also another int which will be um, for the zone and I'll explain that in a moment but first let's open up the game scene and right click or actually go under game object create a new empty game object this one I will name spawn manager and I'll just move it at the origin like this and let's actually add a new component that we'll call spawn manager. Right, so once we've got that, we are going to open it up inside of mono develop and do the usual cleanup. So it should be opening right now and we want to make this static. So we want to make this um, kind of global. So you want to be able to call it from anywhere. So you're on the tower then you might want to be able to call a spawn enemy from pretty much anywhere, right? So that's what we're going to do. And to do that, we are going to declare a public static spawn manager that we'll call instance. And I'll make this a set and get. Right after that, I'll go ahead and just make sure that the instance is set. So in a start, I'll say instance is equal to this. And now we're pretty much able to call this from anywhere at this point. Right. Well, anywhere inside of the um, the game scene, because this does not exist outside of the game scene. So when you call instance, it's actually going to crash. But we don't need to spawn any enemies outside of the game scene, so we're pretty much fine here. Alright, so um, what I was thinking about doing is actually having some kind of predefined zone around the tower. So you see how our tower looks like this, let me just show you when a game boots, of course oh, I'm in a game scene, my bad, so I'm going to open up the preloader and let's actually have a look at this, so we have the tower over here and what I'd like to do is actually define some zones that um, you can spawn the enemy in, so just imagine yourself that this grid has four zones, so this one, this one this one and also this one and I'll be doing that for some kind of uh, gameplay reason at the very end and also to make sure that we're sending enemies from um, each and every side equally right this is also to make sure that we don't have a bunch of enemy just stack in a corner like um, the random is going to give you some value and the value are always down here so by creating this kind of zone system then I'm allowed to just shoot one enemy from here then another from here another from here and another from the fourth position but I was actually thinking about making this a pentagon just to make things a little bit more interesting so uh, pretty much a pentagon is five sides so if we do 360 divided by five we've got 72 um, different angle that we can cover from a single zone and I'll just go ahead and define that right here right at the very top actually of my script I'll make this a private const float zone angle that I'll just put on 72. And then we'll also set another float, a const float. So this one is the spawn distance from the tower. 
that I'll set on say 20 for now. Of course we can be adjusting that a little bit later on. And uh, let's just make sure also that we keep track of how many zones we have. Uh, we could do the, the mats using the zone angle, but I'll just type it in right here. So this is a pentagon, so it is five sides. Okay. Now we need we need a spawn enemy function that we'll be calling from outside. So public void spawn enemy. Oh, enemy. Right. And like I said a little bit earlier, we are going to be taking in um, two integers. So the first one being the prefab index. So which enemy should we spawn from our list, which we don't have. So uh, let me just finish this and I'll go ahead and make a list. And then the second one is the zone ID. Okay, so um, just quickly before we get started in that function, let's declare a public game object array that will call enemy prefabs. That's where we we'll store uh, what kind of enemy there is. So maybe tiny enemy, tough enemy, and flying enemies, who know. We're going to be doing that a little bit later on, but for now, let's go back to the spawn enemy. So. The mathematics for this one are a little bit complicated if you're not familiar with quaternions, but I'll just do it and hopefully you can understand. Let's start with a float zone position. And this is going to be equal to a random position inside of a single zone. So we know that a zone is uh, 72 angles, then it's going to take a number in between 0 and 72. So we'll just do random.range 0 and then zone angle the constant. Okay, and then right after that we'll say zone position is plus equal zone id dot zone angle. Now this way, say we're spawning in the second zone, then it is actually going to do zone id that's number one because second zone, since we're zero base, the second zone is zone id number one, so we'll just do one times 72, and then we add are random to that and we're actually in the second zone. Right, and just after that we will declare a vector tree called direction or dir if you prefer that will make vector tree dot forward times the spawn distance. And this is used with the following quaternion, so quaternion angle is equal to quaternion dot Euler and then the x parameter is zero, the zone position uh, actually, you know, the, uh, the, the, the y parameter is zone position. And finally, the z is also 0. And the way we actually calculate this is we say angle times direction. And it is going to rotate our, um, our vector 3 dot forward times bound distance. So it's actually going to rotate it using this angle. So all we pretty much need to do right now is just call the instantiate which we will remove later on uh, to create a pool, but right now we're testing this, so let's just do enemy prefab, we're instantiating a enemy prefab at the index prefab index, the position we just said was angle times direction, and let's spawn it using the quaternion.identity right now. Okay, so this looks actually quite good, now we need to be able to spawn this, so let's go ahead and create a and another time I'll just say this again, this is going to be a uh, test update. So basically we're going to be removing it in the end, but we need something to test right now. So I'm making a private void update in which I will look for uh, inputs. So input.get key down, then you put any key code you wish. I'll just do key code A because it's the first one. And whenever I press on the A button, I want to be able to spawn a enemy. And we'll just spawn the first one right now, the first easiest enemy, that's going to be the first in the list, and we'll spawn it at, um, which zone could we spawn it at? Let's go ahead and create a float for that, not a float, a int, so private void int zone index, like so, and we'll always spawn it at the zone index. And whenever we're done actually spawning one of those, we can say zone index plus plus so the next time we spawn an enemy it's actually going to be in another zone and of course we got to be clamping this so if zone index is bigger than um, or is bigger or equal than the amount of zones then we're going to say zone index is equal to zero so we're pretty much just clamping this and where is my error 
and also forget about the void that did not make any sense right so we are going to press play we actually did quite a lot of coding without testing this hopefully everything works we're going to enter the game and now here is our tower our spell manager is right here now <laughs> I forgot to actually set any enemies in that enemy prefab array over here so it's going to crash as you can tell um, so we actually need an enemy first let's go back in the game scene I'm going to create a 3d cube a simple small cube like this and I'll name this tiny enemy right so right now I don't need anything else on this script because I just want to test out the spawn manager what I'll do is actually create a new folder inside of the prefab folder and call this enemy that is obviously where every single enemy we make are going to be stored as prefab so I'm going to drag and drop this guy right inside of the enemy folder like so now once he is um, down here as a prefab we can actually remove him and we are going to choose the spell manager increase the size of the enemy prefab by one and let's drag and drop the tiny enemy so now this way whenever we say um, spawn enemy at the index zero it knows it's going to be taking this little guy here right so let's start this from the very beginning I'm going to start from the preloader press on play here's my menu here's my hub and now we go inside of the game and this is the tower so if we take a view from above I'm actually going to disable this plane and I press on the A while inside of the game scene something just found and where exactly is it oh there it is so it is 20 meters away right now um, from the actual tower if we try again it is now in the second zone now third now fourth and now fifth as you can tell they could make a pentagon um, <laughs> actually they make a pentagon uh, they just you know they have the random radius in between each of those so if we just try to draw this really quickly it might actually look something like that and if we just keep on pressing it's going to clamp it and as you can tell we keep just spawning enemies around the tower and I think that's going to be the best way for us to actually tackle um, this spawning mechanic. Alright guys, so if you enjoyed this video or if you learned something, please leave me a like. Really appreciate that. In the next one, we're actually going to turn on those enemies so they walk towards our tower and maybe reduce the size a little bit. They're quite big. But uh, anyway guys, um, thanks a lot for watching and I will be seeing you in the next episode.